Welcome everyone to today's masterclass and live podcast recording right here on the School of Radiance podcast on facial lymphatic drainage. We are going to be getting into the weeds on why facial lymphatic drainage is important and how we can actually do it. Hello, Tamara. Great to hear from you. Hi, Alice, Andrea, Deborah, Kelly, Sylvia. There's some new names and some familiar names here. So great to have you all joining today. And let me know as we move along what your questions are in regards to facial lymphatic drainage, facial gua sha, facial yoga even. And this episode was actually at the request of my dear mother, Thank you, mother. Because I asked her the other day, okay, what, what am I going to do the, my next masterclass on, mom? Do you have any ideas for me? And she said, you should do one on facial lymphatic drainage. So here we are today. And then I also have a special question uh, for you all and something very special near the end of this that don't let me forget uh, that uh, I would love to hear from your insights all on as well. So you might hear my mother behind the scenes. I am located on the familial premises. There's been a, just a huge windstorm here on Vancouver Island over the last two days. And my place is on a 20 acre farm in the middle of nowhere in the sticks and lost power yesterday. So the interweb has been just a little bit spotty. So I do have a backup recording studio at my dear parents' place. Pretty close by just close enough. All right. So what, what is this whole concept of facial lymphatic drainage? Why do we care about it? Why do I care about it as a double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011? Why do I care about it? Because it's going to support healthy blood flow and lymphatic flow to your skin and also help flush out toxins. We're going to be talking about that, but there's also this other layer in regards to the aesthetic benefit, what it can do to actually help us look better. And the other aspect of how it can actually help us heal and recover faster after say having had some type of rejuvenation. Now, first of all, what is the purpose of facial lymphatic drainage and why do I care about it and why I think you should too? Our body's lymphatic system is essentially our detoxification system. So yes, we have our blood, and our blood vessels and our heart that pumps that blood throughout the body. This is why we want to be grounded. We want to be contacting the earth 30 to 45 minutes a day so that our red blood cells will actually move and bump off one another instead of sticking together and having poor blood flowing, carrying of oxygen and nutrients to our vital organs and our skin. Our skin is our largest organ. So if you're seeing issues pop up on your skin, just imagine what's going on, on the inside. So that's something free and really easy. That might sound a little too hippy dippy airy fairy out there, but you can validate and quantify this through live blood cell analysis, actually looking at a sample of blood from a finger prick on a slide underneath a microscope on someone who's been on their phone for five minutes versus someone who has been outside barefoot for 30 to 45 minutes. There's literally evidence of radiation and blood clotting in the individuals who are on their phones. So get off your phones, everybody. If you're listening to this and you're wearing AirPods, you hopefully by now know how I feel about AirPods and Bluetooth speakers and wireless headsets. I do recommend listening to these episodes by downloading them on your phone and not having that phone sending and receiving signals in your pocket while you're on your walk, walking your dog or your little ones or getting out your getting your grounding and physical activity for the day. Just a tip. AirPods smart technology is not making anyone more smart. Let's be more clear about this because the issue with blood flow and the blood clotting situations so brain fog situations like that you're going to be having more brain fog if your blood isn't flowing to your brain as well as with the skin skin redness and irritation as well as with the eyes things like dry eye and ocular issues and ocular diseases we're just seeing a huge spike in autoimmune diseases and also deaths of unknown cause 
which are related to autoimmune diseases or someone passing away before they die. This mortality rate is doubling year over year. I know that sounds very dramatic, but this is exactly what the data sets tell us. So everything you're learning here on the School of Radiance podcast, working with me as a one-on-one in my tutorials, in my membership, it's all going to support you on looking and feeling your best. It's not just about having well done looking makeup and great looking hair and a great outfit. It's really how we feel because the way that we feel is going to then add to our level of beauty. Sylvia, agree on the platelet. It seems dark field has been used for years. Yeah, there's also Kirlion photography as well. That's really cool. And um, this, I'm glad that you mentioned this because with facial lymphatic drainage, I want you to use your fingertips because when we actually use Kirlion photography to assess things like the quality of our human biofield, you can also assess things like jewel output, aka mitochondrial function. We use tech where you, we actually place our fingertips on this plate and it actually shows the pattern of the photons being emitted from our fingertips. Photons are packets of light. We literally have little lightning bolts coming off of our fingertips, which is pretty cool. I would never believe that unless I knew the technology that was used to actually utilize that and capture that. That's called the BioWell. It's for practitioners. I'd be really excited if they came out with a consumer type of product. That's a whole other aside. That was a couple years ago. And when something like that comes to market for the consumer, I'm definitely going to be sharing it because I love using this technology just to get a read on Joule output, aka mitochondrial function, and the quality of my human biofield and other things. And it's also really cool just to see the photo image of the light coming off of my fingertips. So this is why when you're doing your facial lymphatic drainage, I want you to use your hands. I don't want you to use some piece of jade or a gua sha tool or a jade roller, which is not the same as a dermal roller. A jade roller is like this green stone on a roller that looks pretty on Instagram that probably came from China. And uh, a poor child probably put that thing together for you. So use your fingertips. Really important that we're conscious of the types of businesses that we're supporting with purchasing products. And I know that jade rollers and gua sha tools are really popular. There is a time and a place for gua sha on the body with a tool. That would be a whole separate episode for addressing things like the fascia. That's another episode. I've talked about the fascia here before. But for facial lymphatic drainage on your face, use your fingers. Do this while you are applying your skincare products. And in lesson one of my seasonal skin tutorials, which my next tutorial round starts tomorrow. So if those of you are kind of like, oh, what's this tutorial stuff? This is where I take you behind the scenes to actually show you exactly how to use your products from start to finish. Yes, I show up with no makeup and my hair just looking all sorts of fun. It's, re it's really fun. And this is where I share expert level tutorials and insights and show you exactly how to use your products from basic to advanced, dermal rolling, peels, retinols, body care, hair growth stimulation, pre post recovery tips. This is all covered in my seasonal skincare tutorials, seven lessons. You're going to become your own skin pro. Yes, Sylvia, this is so cool. This concept that there's little lightning bolts coming off of our fingers. I also like the idea of using our fingers for facial lymphatic drainage to actually assess our lymph nodes. And one of the interesting things that I noticed on my skin is I will get a little extra congestion on my jawline and sometimes on my neck. They're not really zits. They're just kind of like little bumps. And I notice I'll get them if I haven't been on the anti-aging dermal formula with antioxidants and omegas. Really interesting. What I notice when I cycle, when I'm on different supplements and then when I'm off them, I do this. I don't know why, but sometimes I just give myself a little bit of a break on supplements to kind of see what happens. And that anti-aging dermal formula that you'll find on my skin shop, my skin shop is products all pre-vetted by me, but that one is actually one that I've done a study on. And in four weeks across the board, less redness, less darkness, puffiness around the eyes, fine lines and wrinkles started to, they looked a little bit less noticeable and pigmentation started to fade and a golden glow was noted in four weeks. So that's pretty cool. 
that that type of skin supplement does exist. That's the anti-aging dermal formula. Been manufactured now for about 20 years. Third-party tested. Comes from France. Pretty legit product. So that's why doing your facial gua sha to support lymphatic drainage. I'm going to explain the lymphatics in just a second. Sometimes when I record these live lessons, I like to kind of riff a little bit and just monitor the chat real raw unedited. I think that's why you're all here. <laughs> Anyways, I used to be, I used to show up at this as this very like polished and professional version of myself online. And really at the end of the day, we just want to be honest with one another. We're all aging. We're not getting any younger. And honestly, we're just going to have better interactions with others when we are more ourselves and we're not this super coiffed, presented, highly branded version of ourselves. Nobody's going to relate to that. Quick question, SK, what do you suggest as earthing for those of us who live in an urban environment that's all either concrete or pesticide fertilizer sprayed green areas? I know exactly what you mean about this. Um, last couple of places I've lived have been on golf courses. Why do I like living on a golf course? Because I don't have to do yard work. The, the trade-off with that is that yes, oftentimes fertilizers are used. So you do just want to be a bit conscious where you are going barefoot. Here at my beautiful parents' home, they have a gorgeous garden and I was outside grounding and it was a little cold still and I had to warm up afterwards <laughs> and they don't use fertilizers. So you just have to be aware of that. Now, in the colder months, something that I really like to use or say I'm working and I know I have to be on tech and do appointments and do emails and Zoom calls and all the fun stuff that I get to do behind the scenes to help you out and be of service. It's not just showing up on camera. There's so many other things behind the scenes that I have to get done, which requires sometimes me to sit for long periods of time on my computer and be around tech all the time. And that might be the case for you too, unless you're retired and are living the dream and at the beach every day playing pickleball, ladies Bible studies, you know, South Florida, semi-retired living. I sort of got to enjoy it for a bit. Uh, that was fun. But going to the beach on the sand is great. But indoors, I do like utilizing PEMF technology, pulsed electromagnetic frequency technology. There's two companies that make really great PEMF mats, higher dose and bond charge. They are both on my biohacking page over at the school of radiance.com forward slash biohacking. That's where you can find the list of the tech that I really like. Say for example, air purifiers, water purifiers, blue light blocking glasses, which I'm not wearing today because I'm recording. So I don't have a ton of glare on me because some of you don't like to see the glare in videos on my eyes. For those of you biohackers out there, you can say, who cares about that? You know, sometimes I don't always want to wear glasses. I do want to wear contacts. But with the blue light, it is very bad for our eyes and our skin. So protection is great. Then you're also going to find EMF protective clothing, water structuring tools, in-home energy harmonizing technologies, which is a thing and actually researched quite well and the PEMF mats, which is gonna help you ground inside. Sylvia, love real deal talk. Okay, that's good. SK, the real you is very accessible and encourages me that I can do these things too. Fabulous. No joke, when I started showing up on social media, I'd say about 20, 2014, I really wanted to, this, this is really going way back. And yes, then we're gonna talk about what the facial lymphatics do. So if you don't want to hear about the story, fast forward, because I know your time is the one commodity you don't get back. But this is kind of just to give you a little bit of um, backstory, if you will. So when I started to show up online, I really wanted to answer frequently asked questions and provide insights to support pre and post recovery, because I've had a bit of work done myself. It's no surprise, not much to me is original. I mean, I am in the field of medical aesthetics. I'm not going to lie and say I've never done anything. I've had a lot done. There's no question about that. I don't hide it. And when I was going through a couple of different things, I went online to look at vlogs on 
the recovery process to get an understanding and insight as to what I was really signing up for with, you know, different surgeries and things like that. You know, different supplements to take, you know, how often to ice, what you look like, what the recovery time is going to be like. Do you need to set yourself up with some snacks ahead of time, all the food you need? Are you going to be able to leave the house to get things or are you just going to want to hunker down a little bit? And so that was helpful, the, the vlogs on YouTube. But the thing is, is when I was going through a uh, little bit of work myself, and I was a nurse, I just, I found that the quality or the caliber of information out there just wasn't that great and wasn't really backed by a lot of research and you know, things were expensive, like this gadget, that thing, that supplement. And, you know, then I got into the industry. I really learned about the different options that are available for rejuvenation and went through this myself and supported lots of, of patients during the process as well, working in an oculoplastic surgery setting. So eyelid surgery, lots of skin cancers, by the way, that I saw. So that's why I started to show up online was to share information, but I didn't want anyone to judge me and, you know, be regarded in this specific way by my colleagues. So I really showed up as this way too polished. It's like a stick up there. But I was like, hello, my name is Rachel Baga and I'm a blah, 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 blah. Oh, and I've done blah, blah, blah. No. Nobody wants to hear that. We want to hear, okay, what can we do to make our lives better and look and feel our best in a real way? So this is the evolution of everything, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just a little bit of a side. Sylvia, those are all things I'm really interested in hearing about. So awesome. You were so inquisitive and such a biohacker. I am a big time biohacker. Actually, Dave Asprey, my good friend, spent uh, Christmas and birthday with my good soul brother. He actually called me crunchy and granola now. So funny. Hilarious. Actually, he was a big uh, reason that I started to get out and share some information because, you know, I helped him get ready for superhuman and things like that. He actually quoted me in his book, but didn't give me any credit for it. But, it, you know, my face work is on the cover. So there's that. And being inquisitive is something that came with time after I built my own confidence to become a researcher. Yeah, it's kind of, I know it's really funny. He's a little behind. Sometimes I'll say things under my breath a little bit. And only a couple of you who are really paying attention are going to pick up on that. <laughs> I'm making SK and Sylvia laugh. Yeah. So, I mean, this is funny because yes, I'll say things in a very polished way and then I'll just kind of drop something under my breath. This is also a really interesting part of my humor that I'll say things and I'll just kind of read the room a little bit and see who picks up on it. But I can't do that too often because it's, it's just not good form and etiquette uh, in, the right, in the right setting. See who's paying attention. See who's really paying attention. Don't do that in real life, though. I, I don't recommend that. So why lymphatic drainage of the face and neck is really important is because we have our blood that's flowing through our body, and we also have our lymphatic system. Our lymphatic system is responsible for helping with detoxification. It's kind of like our garbage disposal system. The lymphatics go throughout the body with a sort of concentration of lymphatics in our groin area, around our abdomen, around our breasts, our axilla, under under our area, and also our clavicle area here, and our neck, and our face, and our head. And actually, there's no lymph nodes in the brain, which is interesting. So when you're getting your beauty sleep and sleeping with EMF protective clothing or bedding, taking your magnesium, using your red light in the, the PM, doing your sauna, doing your bath, doing your skincare, you know, yada, yada, yada. I've done a whole lesson on a beautiful skincare routine. It's going to set you up for sleep. So if your, your brain is literally shrinking while you're sleeping, it's okay because you're sleeping. So your level of intelligence doesn't matter that much. Anyways, I did it there. And when you're sleeping, your brain is going to shrink. And then what happens is your cerebral spinal fluid is going to bathe your brain. Your brain gets a bath when you sleep. That's why getting into your deep sleep is really great. And 
reducing EMFs, sleeping in EMF clothing or EMF bedding was one of the best things I did to improve my HRV, heart rate variability and sleep score, and consistently allows me to get 100% sleep scores with using EMF protective clothing, which is a big deal. I have yet to come across other individuals who consistently get 100% sleep scores uh, using the eight sleep primarily. And when I used to wear the aura rings, I don't wear trackers anymore. I don't like tech on my body, even if it's airplane mode anymore, but it served a purpose when I wore it, but on actually both those tracking technologies. So it's quantifiable, validated, all that fun stuff. That's the whole deal with being a biohacker is you're basically your own guinea pig and you're hearing about all these cool things and you, then you do them and then you see if they're working for you because we're all uniquely and beautifully made. And then you'll see the benefit if your sleep improves or your HRV improves and readiness scores improve and all these different things. It's not just, okay, yeah, I, f I feel like I slept okay. You know, how many times did you toss and turn? Did you, did you get enough deep sleep? How fast did you fall asleep? What was your wake up like? There's so many nuances that we can track with these biohacking technologies, which is so cool. Sylvia, that's awesome. Where are you getting your sleep clothes? Everything I talk about that isn't like a skincare product, a hair care product, dermal rolling, hair skin nail supplement, that's all on my skin shop. Everything else, especially the biohacking stuff, is on my biohacking page at theschoolofradiance.com. So two brands of clothes. There's No Choice and then there's Lambs. No Choice is the one that makes the bedding. Uh, be forewarned, you will look like you're ready to stroll on to the set of Star Trek in the silver clothing, but this stuff works. And uh, I was speaking at an event in Hollywood about a month ago, a month and a bit ago. And I wore this beautiful black designer cocktail dress with gorgeous black velvet uh, Valentino heels. You know, I love to get dressed up sometimes. And actually under my dress, I wore my EMF shorts, but nobody knew, right? My ovaries, my gut were totally protected underneath my gorgeous cocktail dress. I do this all the time. I kid you not. I kid you not. When you become a biohacker and you realize just how good you can feel from all of these really kind of ridiculous things that you can do, but they make you feel better. They make you sleep better you're going to carry on because you know that it's working for you. Even if that means wearing EMF protective shorts underneath your cocktail dress. I do this all the time underneath dresses, underneath pants, underneath, underneath, yeah, I already said dresses underneath anything. It's fun. And uh, then sleep in some of those things too. So the lymphatics basically help to shuttle out toxins. Then it gets dumped into your bloodstream that blood goes to your liver, goes to your kidneys, gets filtered out, and then the waste products go into the toilet and you never have to see them again. With the facial lymphatics, we actually have this huge concentration of lymph nodes on our head and our neck. But the deal, here's the deal with the lymph nodes on the head and the neck is we don't have a lot of skeletal muscle. We have skeletal muscle that we're moving all the time if you're hopefully exercising enough on your arms and your legs. So every time we're lifting weights, we're running, we're jogging, we're doing something active to, to move and care for this beautiful body that we've been given. That's pumping your lymphatics on your body. But with the head and the neck, what's unique is we don't have a lot of movement with our head and neck. So what we have to do is actually physically open up these lymph nodes. And how you want to do that is to start with applying some pressure to your clavicular lymph nodes, which are just above your clavicle here, just pressing. Um, you'll feel some areas that might be like a little bit tender. That That's probably a lymph node. I have a little bit of a tender one here. Um, also to access your vagus nerve, it's right here too. So if you kind of like really dig in, and find a sore spot and go quite deep, uh, you are getting some vagus nerve stimulation there too, which is good to tone that, by the way. So applying just a little bit of gentle pressure on your clavicular lymph nodes, and then you're going to gently work your way up your neck to the nodes that are under, I have makeup on, so I'm not gonna smear my makeup, you know, might wanna go on a hot date after this. 
So I'm not going to, you know, do a full demo here. I do this in my skincare tutorials where every step of the way with your cleanser, your moisturizer, your sunscreen, we are moving our lymph. And basically we want to first open up the clavicular lymph nodes and then make our way up to underneath our jaw and then the sides of the ear. So it's literally just like pressing and applying some pressure. And then we're going to be going basically from the middle of our face to the sides or the lateral aspect of our face. So kind of around the nose, right in front of the ears. If you're listening to this, it's a little tricky, but just imagine here with me, we're, we're basically opening up the nodes on the top of the chest. Then we're kind of like pressing and applying some pressure on these little lymph nodes. They're like little squishy balls. And if they're if there's something wrong, those lymph nodes are going to be hard and they're going to have jagged qualities to them. So I think, you know, why not do a little bit of a lymph node assessment on your, your head and your neck and your thyroid, which rests on the very front of your throat and also your thymus, which is on your breastplate. I like to, um, kind of do some lymph movement on the actual chest itself. I think that's a good idea, but to notice if, and you know, Tie in your breast exam at the same time when you're washing and putting your moisturizer on because really when you're using your products and doing your skincare, you should be applying them from basically hairline to nipple. So add in a breast exam. Why the heck not? While you're at it, assess your axilla and armpit nodes as well. I don't think I'll be doing those in my seasonal skincare tutorial, but I do show you start to finish with products. But basically open up your nodes and then go from mid face to the sides of your face and then down. So flushing down your neck and then actually getting into your scalp because we do have nodes. We also have muscle. We also have fascia. I feel like that's like a whole separate episode talking about the facial muscles and the facial fascia. But basically the lymph nodes, we want to just apply a bit of pressure on those little squishy balls. And then what's going to happen is we're going to be putting a little bit of pressure on the lymph nodes. And then what happens is the lymph nodes kind of like squish the fluid back into the lymphatic system. That's why we want to do this motion of mid to lateral and then down. And then it's going to be filtered uh, out through and into our blood and then down the toilet. Now, what happens when we squish the lymph node, we move that stagnant lymph out. And then what happens then is new fresh lymph carrying micronutrients is then going to help support your microcirculation and nutrient delivery actually to your tissues. So really these are the deeper mechanisms that are at play when you are doing facial lymphatic drainage. And again, just to reiterate, I don't want you to use a gua sha tool on your face. Use your fingertips, do it while you're doing your skincare. Take that time that maybe you would have used by following someone on social media, showing you how to jade roll their face, which is just the biggest waste of your time. Take that time instead to do things like dermal rolling at home and doing your, your lymphatic drainage every time you're doing your skincare routine in the AM, the PM. Take that 15, 20 minutes, two to five nights a week to do your dermal rolling, to basically use these tiny needles to puncture your skin. You're not going to bleed. It just feels like a little bit warm. And I do this full tutorial in uh, lesson six in my skincare tutorials as well. The only place I do dermal rolling demos, I'm not going to um, have just anybody watch it and do it and then do it wrong. Hey, Karen, great to see you, by the way. And hi, Alice. And dermal rolling is fantastic. You are going to be getting a degree of lymphatic drainage while you're doing your dermal rolling as well, which is great. But basically, these little needles, instead of the jade roller, which is just going to squish your lymph around, which you should be doing twice a day anyways, AM, PM routine. But with dermal rolling, these little needles are puncturing the skin and at just the right depth with the MR3 roller that I have is perfect for long-term use. It's good. That roller is going to last you about two years, by the way. And they've been manufactured since the 90s. So again, the rollers that I offer are not like a made-in-China product, 10, 20 use, throw it out, get another one. I mean, 
you'll see those a lot and you'll see a lot of different influencers promoting rollers like that or just doing a stamper. Yes, I do show how to use a smaller stamper for the more contoured areas of the face, like the la like the medial canthal areas and the corners of the nose, the lower eyelid, the corners of the, the, the corners of the eyes rather and the corners of the nose. Those more contoured areas that the roller, the dermal roller is going to have a hard time getting to. But when we puncture those fibroblasts with the teeny tiny needle, you're getting a stimulation effect through a controlled injury for more collagen and elastin, as well as uh, melanocytes to help regulate the melanin distribution essentially in your face. So facial lymphatic drainage will also help to reduce puffiness, which is why it's so excellent to incorporate lymph drainage after surgery. So for any of you who have had a tummy tuck or a body lift, let me know in the chat. Tummy tucks are more common than you might think. When these types of body surgeries are done, oftentimes in the clinic you've had it done, they want you to come back and they wanna do some lymphatic drainage because there's gonna be more swelling, there's gonna be more edema, there's healing happening. So some of you also might have had a facelift or are thinking about get, getting a facelift or a neck lift or eyelid surgery. There's nothing wrong with wanting to go under the knife, but what I will say is not everybody wants to, and that's okay. That's where I come in. I meet you where you're at with your values, your budget, your lifestyle, what you want to do, what you don't want to do, and help you come up with a plan of what to do at home and what to do in the clinic. This is part of my one-on-one -on -one care, which is very different than just you showing up to a med spa and getting recommended just what they have at the med spa or what they're able to do, what they're comfortable doing. I have a little bit more of a different perspective that I can offer you, which will likely save you tens of thousands of hours and dollars. This is why I sleep very well at night. Hey, I do get 100% sleep scores. There you go. It's not just the biohacking stuff. It's also the emotional stuff and you know, really living a life of service and of purpose. And if you know anything about me, I am here to serve you. And that's what I'm here to do is just help people look better and be better and be better parents. Pretty simple. That's why I'm here. That is why I'm here. Not everybody's here for that. A lot of people are also here just for them and then also for the money. So maybe, just maybe, that's also why I get those 100% sleep scores. So after facial surgery and eyelid surgery, we do want to do a little extra lymphatic drainage and movement because just the nature of having, say, your eyelids done, you're going to get a little bit of extra edema on that upper or lower eyelid area. And by the way, for those of you who actually want to come see me in the clinic, I am practicing in sunny, Bidney, <laughs> sunny Sydney, BC. That's a tongue twister and a half. Uh, about 10 minutes from the ferry, 10 minutes from the airport, right next to the ocean. It's just beautiful. And you can actually come and see me in Sydney for your rejuvenation. The link to book that is on the schoolofradiance.com. Love to see you and actually do rejuvenation for you. Also to backtrack, one of the reasons why I started to show up online was because I had people flying in to see me from all over the world, literally all over the world, multiple different continents to see me for their rejuvenation. So of course I had to you know, help them plan what they were going to do in the follow-up online. Um, so this was kind of before people even really knew what Zoom was. And then of course uh, that was very exciting. After surgery, focusing on your facial lymphatic drainage is going to be helpful for moving that stagnant lymph and also just helping with that puffiness. Even if you say have laser rejuvenation or neuromodulators or dermal filler injectables, you still do want to keep up with your facial lymphatic drainage. One thing that I will be very transparent with is with things like injectables and things like surgery, there is some cutting involved. There is displacement of tissue. There can be just from the rejuvenation itself an impact on your facial lymphatics. So if you've ever had any type of facial rejuvenation like injectables or surgery, then doing face and neck lymphatic drainage is really helpful. However, even if you haven't done 
any of that, facial lymphatic drainage is beautiful for reducing facial puffiness. So say, for example, you wake up with puffiness to the eye area. What you really want to do is also then focus on releasing some of the microcirculation and lymph and any muscle tension in your masseter muscles to your jawline. And I show you how to do this. Again, lesson one in my skincare tutorials, register now over at theschoolofradiance.com. You'll see me do this. Uh, it's just hard for me to do it because I still have makeup. And like I said, I might, might may or may not have a hot date after this. Anyways, even if you haven't done anything, I still want you to do lymphatic drainage because of the, the effect that it can give you. It can literally help to reduce puffiness to the nose, puffiness to the eyes, and just give this more sort of like svelte contoured look to your features. It is a thing and it can definitely contribute to that, which is helpful. However, you need to have realistic expectations with some of these yoga apps out there and some of these online accounts that are you know, showing these very compelling before and after photos that sure you can get excellent contributing benefits from things like facial lymphatic drainage, gua sha, uh, facial fascia and muscle release work. I'm a big fan of all of them. It's like little bits of this, little bits of that with biohacking for your sleep, with your skincare, with rejuvenation, with literally making good choices 90 to 99% of the time. The other time, just kind of, you know, have at her. Have a good time. Live in moderation. But the facial puffiness situation is huge. So say, for example, someone's really stressed out, they will have what's called like this cortisol face, their face will literally be more puffy. So that's why if you want to look your best, you also want to be super chill, you want to be relaxed, you want to be calm, you want to be moving through life with grace and ease, not this clunky, stressed out, hyper masculinized woman wearing camouflage and plaid, and you know, a big hat, big Timberland boots, I'm kind of describing myself a couple of years ago <laughs> because that is going to age you faster. Now, there are some reasons I did that with the whole masculine and feminine dynamic and, and feeling safe and all these things and parasites and all sorts of different things. And I really get into, because I know you, some of you listening are maybe going through a hard time. Stress is a sign of being alive and you're just looking for strategies to, you know, flip that script and get you out of being stressed out in your personal life, in your professional life, and move through the world with more grace, with your movements, with etiquette, having higher communication skills, loving yourself first, and then loving others even more. You have to really master that connection and relationship that you have with yourself. That's why this whole concept of self-care, and looking after our skin and hearing people say, Oh, I feel vain learning about this stuff. Push your ego out of the way. It's only there to keep you safe and maybe keep you from some judgment from other people. Keep your health stuff, your biohacking, your rejuvenation to yourself. You don't have to be like me and preach it from the mountaintops. The reason I do it is to help you. Uh, and only about 1% to 2% of people online who actually are consuming content are actually creators. So let me just tell you that this is not for everybody. SK, quit the transformation. Yes, absolutely. I did have a little bit more of that puffiness. Well, actually quite a bit on my face and my body. And then you know what? You just let that stuff go. You, you move into this more feminine way of your gestures, of your speech, your communication, learning etiquette so that you can be comfortable and confident in any situation and then just beautiful people and opportunities start to present themselves in your life. So life is easy for beautiful people, but life is more full of grace and ease for those who are radiant. So there is this much deeper layer that I talk about not publicly at all, because there's so much that I do that I know that I practice that I actually don't really want people to know that I know and do, and I'm doing with them in conversation and uh, sizing them up and all these things. But I, I had to learn these things so that I could better navigate and negotiate with people in situations. 
and I just don't want people knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> but in the membership, it's, you know, no holds barred or however you say that phrase. It's, it's just very open and honest and quite some interesting stories that I have to share. Kelly, I love your idea of dealing with skin without surgery. Yes, this all just depends on what's important to you. I know lots of people and I actually saw this huge shift in about 2018 of so many people not wanting to do neuromodulator injectables, not wanting to do dermal fillers. They would meet with me and they'd say, Rachel, what can I do? I don't want to do injectables. I just, I just don't. In fact, I recommend that for individuals who say, for example, have underlying autoimmune conditions or are going through stuff emotionally, or also have the insight to know that something just isn't quite right with their body and their body's going through stuff. Usually it's coming from an emotional perspective. There's also the energetic and the spiritual side of things too. I don't get into a lot of that here on the show because some of that stuff, you know, I'm not comfortable talking about publicly but in the membership in a smaller container. I absolutely am because this is a place to get, you know, real raw, honest, because the things that I've done for my own transformation, SK, quite the transformation, yes, to then where I am now. And I mean, if I can do it, you can do it too. So the whole concept of, of having great skin without surgery is attainable. You just need to work a little bit harder with living an excellent lifestyle, adding the biohacking, making sure you're getting your antioxidants, omegas, collagen, getting enough protein in the day. So I'm about 130 pounds, which means I need to be eating about 130 grams of protein a day and consuming electrolytes, drinking, you know, sometimes 2.2 liters to three liters of water, depending on how much I'm exercising that day. We need to get these key nutrients on board, stop eating anti-nutrient foods and test instead of guess exactly what we're eating as well. And really limiting that alcohol content, you know, that modern music that is just filled with nonsense. Um, I was out for dinner the other day and trigger warning for Taylor Swift fans trigger warning. It, like if you like Taylor Swift, I just want you to fast forward, fast forward like two, three minutes. Because when I hear music and it's nothing but scrambled, messed up relationships, bad situations, bad decisions, and just not focusing on the positives, which I think is faith and family. And of course, health is part of that too. I, I can't listen to that stuff. Like I, I just don't even like it. Same with movies. I won't watch horror movies. And the books that I read, I kid you not, are either espionage because I can learn about tradecraft and that stuff's kind of fun. By the way, my uncle, uh, he's in the intelligence world when I was growing up. Super cool uncle. And he just wrote a book and it's probably going to be a movie. And he might have um, focused the main character on a stereotype of me, which is kind of fun. Uh, so that, that's kind of neat. So I love kind of like espionage or self-help, right? Relationships or health. So espionage, self-help. Uh, those are the books I read. And then for music, love country, usually some good stuff in there, minus a lot of alcohol references. And just really focusing on good things, being around good people who aren't making terrible decisions, who aren't chaotic, uh, people that don't have a very anxious attachment style. There's so many deep layers to consider when you are forming your friendships and relationships and also how to um, lovingly engage with people that do have certain attachment styles and personality archetypes so that you leave a beautiful impression and you make your exit with the in and out communication strategy that I like to teach. Nobody's the wiser if I just like, I really want to get out of that situation. They have no idea that that's what's going on in my head because I don't make that note. Nervous system regulation for the win. Sylvia, stress does cause you to be out of balance, feminine and masculine, hundred percent. And you know, the stress, the learning about communication, having a really solid sense of our values, especially for those of you here where health is a really high value and then having boundaries to instill that when you are with your friends, you're not going to be out until 2am drinking your face off and, you know, 
partnering up with more, multiple people. That's that's not what you're going to be doing. You're probably going to be doing your sauna, taking your bath and doing red light therapy. <laughs> it's a whole different lifestyle, yeah, but that's okay. Balance, you attract more good things to you, 100%. But, but the other thing I wanted to touch on, and then we'll wrap up here because when I do these live calls, you all just ask really brilliant questions and I don't want to skim over them because I'm really grateful for you taking the time to be here and spend your time with me. But balancing the masculine and feminine is so key. And for so long, you know, I was praised for working like a man and doing all this and that and the other thing. Uh, but really in the culture where I am and have grown up, it just like, it just wasn't really talked about. And it's so important. It's so important. And also Sylvia says, I read some injectable fillers can cause you to have problems later if you do want surgery. Yeah. When here's the deal, when people get a facelift, they think, oh, I'm never going to have to do injectables. I actually recommend before even doing a facelift, which is in the cards for a lot of people, eyelid surgery is more common than you might think. Rhinoplasty, aka no surgery or eyelid surgery are the two most commonly performed surgeries. And eyelid surgery can be transformative for people's vision if they've totally lost their peripheral or they just have people saying, oh, you look so tired. If you know someone that you're out and about and someone says that to someone, you probably don't even want to be friends with them. But if you're that person that's saying that to people, you need to check yourself. Otherwise, you're going to wreck yourself and you're not going to have anybody ever want to be friends with you. And you, you just keep, keep that to yourself. Please and thank you. This world would be a better place if more people had a filter. So with fillers prior to surgery, fillers, threads, sure, they could have an impact. But even after surgery, you might want to be considering doing some of those things anyways. I do have an opinion on threads. We're not going to get into that here. Some surgeons don't want any fillers in the face when they're doing, say, like a deep plane facelift and reorganizing tissue and things like that. Some, some surgeons are okay with this. Some are not okay with it. So I'd say surgeon and also surgery specific. Sylvia, sound is huge. Everything's connected. Energy, frequency, nature is balance. Appears what we need is resonance. Balanced sound heals. Oh, Sylvia, that's so beautiful. I'm going to mention something here that we, Kelly says, I love your sense of humor. Well, I'm glad because, see, I can't record this stuff if I'm by myself because it's like, is this even landing? So at least I have you all here as, as, you know, kind of like a soundboard, letting me know that you like this because otherwise I'll, you know, keep it subdued and things like that. Here's the deal with the world that we live in. If you ask physicists, they're going to very frankly tell you that 80% of what you see is not what you see. 80% of our universe is the fifth element called quintessence dark matter, the space between 80% of what we see is not like we see the physical. And even that is atoms and molecules constantly moving in resonance in a certain fashion. And we consider that a solid, but actually everything is always in motion. So it's just really interesting when you look at us and the universe, we're just like this always evolving masterpiece. And it's really up to us to make sure that those little spaces in between, such as the energy, such as the emotions, the communication, what we're doing with our lives, making sure all that is in check and on point is really going to set you up for long lasting beauty. Because if you're stressed out, you're making poor life decisions, you're going to see it on your face. You're going to see it on your eyes. You're going to see it on your face. So if you've been making some not so good decisions lately, you know, maybe some prayer can help you with that too, but just it's never too late to change how you've been behaving, but sometimes it just comes down to actually learning how to make those changes and to do them in a way that's kind of gradual. That's why the membership is so great 
because it's about a year long container for you to, you know, every step of the way, depending on the topic you're drawn to, to learn about this, to learn about that. And it's not about going off the deep end and surrounding yourselves with crystals everywhere and, you know, talking to this person or that person or, you know, this person who's not even there. And, you know, you really just want to stay grounded in this approach of health and wellness and vitality and energy and spirituality. Stay grounded. Don't go off the deep end. So when it comes to learning about all these different nuances, because I'm a researcher, I have the ability to jump in and do a deep dive and then come back out on the other side and still have all my hair. Not everybody has this capacity and they'll sort of get sucked into the vortex of these deep dives on things. And then they'll go a little too extreme. So that's what a really good sort of like mentor does for you is they'll do the research for you and then report back. Karen. Okay. Before you go, Karen, I love you so much. So great. To, I was so excited to see your name here. I want to hear from you. I'm about to do a challenge. I'm about to do a challenge, but I have no idea what to do it on. So I want to hear from you. Either it's a challenge on beauty sleep, either it's a challenge on building collagen. I don't even know. I have so many ideas in my mind, but I want to do something for you that you actually want. Tell me, please, 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 whether you're here live or catching the replay, I would love to hear from you. What type of one or two week challenge would you like me to do? Keeping in mind, I already offer one-on-one sessions for customized guidance, the cake recipe, seasonal skincare tutorials, teaching you exactly how to use your products, basic to advance in seven weeks, and the membership for the deeper transformation of being your most radiant feminine balanced version. Keeping in mind, I already do those. What would be a really great challenge that you would love for me to walk you through that will make your life better? Knowing the background that I have, the different things I talk about on the show, I really want to host a challenge that's going to just make people's lives better. So please, 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 whether you're here live, drop it in the chat, or if you're listening, to this replay on the School of Radiance podcast, send me an email info at the school of radiance.com with your challenge ideas. I don't want to make something that nobody wants to take. I want to make something that I'm getting sort of like over and over and over again from those of you who are part of the community that you want more information on please, please, please. It's crickets here in the chat right now, ladies and gentlemen, you've been lighting this up the whole time. I'll give you a few moments while I get through some questions. These aren't really questions today. These are all comments. Kelly, I love your sense of humor. Sylvia's sense of humor and laughter is what we all need. Amen. And Sylvia, love the always evolving masterpiece. You know what? When I said that, I knew that that was going to be something kind of cool. This always evolving masterpiece. I got to write that down because that's actually pretty good. Sometimes, sometimes cool things happen when you riff a little bit. And I just screenshot at that one. Uh, Kelly, what is best to do a one-on-one or join the membership? It depends. It depends on your budget. It depends how far you want to go. Kelly, I have lots of individuals who, beautiful men and women who, yes, men too, who do a one-on-one skincare t- care tutorials and membership pretty much as soon as they hear about me. They're like, I want to know all the things. They actually register for all three of those at once. Typically, the journey with working with me starts with a one-on-one and doing the tutorials. And then when you're ready, doing the membership. But if you're here, Kelly, and you're asking about the membership, it's a clear indication that the membership is right for you. Because I actually create what I do here and what I talk about with a lot of intention to really support highly intuitive and empathic individuals who are good people and who want to be the best version of themselves possible. And it's okay to look incredible in the process. So Kelly, you're ready for it all. Just join everything. Use promo code masterclass15, and that's going to get you 15% off. Just an FYI, with the membership, it's definitely more of an investment because we meet twice a month. There's, yes, pre-recorded lessons, but we meet twice a month live. You can ask me anything, and we go deep. There is no filter on this. If you thought this was no filter, you haven't seen anything yet. We go really deep and it's a really special group of humans who, you know, their lives are, are 
transforming, not just the way that they look, the way that they move, but their jobs, their relationships, what they're here to do, and they just feel better. So Kelly, join the membership. There's a pay in full option and there's an also a monthly payment plan. Sylvia, building collagen would be an awesome challenge. Okay, Sylvia, you do riffing so good. You should hear me on my electric guitar. Well, I have an acoustic electric and an electric. Uh, that's really where I love to make some good riffs. And SK, have to do another appointment. Love this. Thank you. We'll give you the challenge some thought. We'll give the challenge some thought. Please do. Again, I don't want to make something that nobody wants. I want to make something that you want. Think of a one or two week challenge where I'm going to show up, help you out, give you some tips. So what do you want tips on? Knowing again that I already do one-on-one -on -one skincare tutorials in the membership. What's a specific thing that I maybe haven't talked about enough? Or even those of you who have already done the one-on-one -on -one tutorials and membership. What's something else? What's something else that you think, here's where you can be of service, that you feel like more people need to know? And with the different people you're hearing online through podcasts and shows and things like that, that not enough people are talking about. That's also another angle. Email me info at the school of radiance.com. And for those of you who stay the entire time, you are, um, I thank you very much because doing these live honestly just makes it so much more fun for me because, you know, I, I got to get stuff out there to support you all, right? Because if I don't produce anything, you guys are like, where are you? What are you doing? Did you not make it back on one of your off-road 4x4 adventure days? Where'd you go, Rachel? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to share a very special link in the chat. I would love to connect with you if we have not yet connected. And I'm going to put this here in the chat, very special link for those of you who join these calls live. Sylvia would love to hear more about the fascia. You got it, done some episodes on that already. Kelly, awesome, been listening, you to, been listening to you since I heard you on Dave Asprey's podcast. I've been on his show twice, so there's two really, I think, pretty good episodes on there. And been wanting to do one-on-one -on -one with you. I will be booking it today. I am headed to Victoria, end of May. Can I get an appointment in person? Great question for all of my out of town clients, Kelly, I recommend you book a one-on-one -on -one first. So use promo code masterclass15, book your one-on-one -on -one over at the school of radiance.com. And then on that one-on-one, -on -one, what we'll do is I'll create a plan for you on when you do come to see me in the clinic. So we're maximizing your time. And then also you could plan and budget accordingly um, lots of times people come in to see me because they're seeing family. Maybe they used to live here as well. They're doing other things. So I will get more into the weeds on that with you, Kelly. So book your one-on-one -on -one first, and then we will uh, talk more about that. Sylvia, are you going to the biohacking conference? Are you going to the biohacking conference? I love the biohacking conference. This is where biohackers go to hang out. Have a good time. Everyone there is a biohacker. You know, we're all fun and weird in our own way. And we're just learning about how to be the best versions of ourselves. What's the latest tech? Who are some new friends that we could make? This is a great place to make friends, by the way. I actually don't announce ahead of time if I'm going to be somewhere or not for certain reasons. I don't know. It's something I do. Unless I'm speaking at it, which I spoke at the biohacking conference last year. <laughs> Sylvia would love to. Yeah, I've, I've met a number of um, my beautiful one-on-one -on -one clients at last year's biohacking conference, which was really, really fun. So I did, honestly, I did a ton of travel last year. I was a snowbird in South Florida for six months. I did just tons of travel right now. For me, it's about peace. And it's about peace. It's about being in the middle of nowhere and doing my thing and just really slowing down. It's really important to do when your body tells you that it wants to do it. So do I want to travel? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll see you there. Maybe, just maybe. I know it's like 10 days from now. Um, but we'll see. Just waiting for some additional signs to make it very clear that I'm supposed to go also. Okay, that's a wrap. No more questions. Send me your challenge topic requests as well as podcast topic requests. I would love to hear from you. 
because I'm a practitioner. I can get stuck in my brain. And, you know, you don't want the polished and professional version of me showing up where I'm just like super boring. You don't want that. So let me know what you want to hear more of. And saw Sarah is talking was surprised you weren't talking. They need you to talk more. I mean, I'll be at the next, I'll be at next year's Kelly. You were wonderful. Thank you. And I look forward to meeting with you, Kelly. I don't like to use the word wonderful because I know you're giving me a compliment and thank you. Uh, word choice is really key. So if you're new here, I don't use words like amazing, wonderful, fascinating, wild, crazy, because they're really scrambled words and we don't want to be scrambled. We want to be clear, concise. We want to know where we're going. We don't want to be wondering about things because wondering about things is actually not a good use of your energy or the what if situation. What if, what if, what if, right? What if, what if, what about going to the biohacking conference? Uh, but there's also another thing to be made about being decisive, which I am, but uh, I got to get some confirmation on a couple things timing wise, if it's going to be the best thing. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for hanging out with me with me for the last hour and 10 minutes. You are all beautiful. Have a great day. Be radiant. I may or may not be going out on a hot date after this. I may or may not keep you posted either. <laughs> all right. Move that lymph, move that body. And I will see many of you in my next skincare tutorial tomorrow where I actually teach teach you exactly how to do it. I talked about the principles and some tips on how to do it, but you actually get to see me do it while I'm putting my skincare on. Alice, thank you. You are very welcome. Hey, Nell Bauer. That sounds like a Dutch name. It takes one to know one. Okay. Love you all so much. Be good people, everybody. Make good choices and lead by example.